Well, welcome everybody to another Women Lead webinar brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today, and we are delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you, the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people or projects, a division or a business. And we select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. Now, our webinar today is just shy of an hour, and we welcome your questions and comments. Just submit them to me in the chat window, and we'll answer them near the end of our, our show today. Now, the focus of our webinar today is what does home mean to you today? And as you know, we are in interesting times, right? And so I am very excited to introduce our thought leader today, Gunilla DeSanto. She is a certified interior decorator and designer, as well as a certified professional home stager. And she's gonna tell you a lot more about herself in just a minute. But do let me share that Gunilla merges her background in branding and design with her passion for interior design. And that unifies function, style, and comfort. And in this kind of challenging environment, what we're going through right now with being locked down and, and quarantined and so forth, she's going to share with us ways that you design spaces that create a calming, while still luxurious environment where people can really relax and recharge and be their, their best selves. So without any further ado, I'm gonna hand this off to my very special pre presenter here today, Danilla. So take it away, it's all yours. Thank you, Patty. I'm delighted and excited to be on this webinar today. Um, so the first thing um, that I wanted to talk a little bit about is um, how did I get here? <laughs> <laughs> um, my company is Deluxe Decor by Design uh, and as you mentioned, I am the um, owner as well as the designer. Um, so my background actually started um, in, I was born and raised in Stockholm, Sweden. Oops, <laughs> was a little quick. Um, <laughs> So um, I grew up with a dad who was a structural engineer, and he was also actually a really, really um, talented builder. And um, in the summers, uh, we had a house out in the Stockholm Archipelago, and I would help him with all kinds of um, different projects. Uh, at one time, we did, um, he built a raw, he had a raw, we had a raw attic space, but he actually built three bedrooms and a sitting room and all kinds of stuff. And this is where I got involved. Mm -hmm. um, I just really got bit by the design bug, I would, but I would get only into details and the decor, like paint colors and fabrics. And my dad was like, well, you know, we're going to frame this. And I was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't care less about that. So, um, however, fast forward when I got to the United States and had finished school, um, which I, you know, majored in marketing and business administration, I got into the record industry, believe it or not. And I did promotion and marketing and I, I was promoting and, and marketing such awesome 80s acts like Taylor Dane and New Shoes and Level 42 and um, even ZZ Top. And yes, that is me with Billy Gibbons at one of their concerts. Very cool guy, boy, like the nicest guy you ever met in your entire life. Um, fast forward a few years after that and I ended up working in um, cable television. I actually worked for the Sci-Fi Channel for a number of years. Uh, where our work um, was actually critically acclaimed and got a fair amount of uh, publicity. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we also, um, you know, our work actually garnered uh, quite a few um, prestigious international awards. But interior design has always been where my heart is. So simultaneously, as I worked in television, I also had an interior design business on the side. Um, it started with me actually doing my own projects. Um, and what happened was 
my um, neighbors and friends and coworkers and whatnot came over and really loved what I had done and they wanted me to help me, me help them with their projects like kitchen or redoing the living room and whatnot. So um, you may wonder what are, what types of services? I mean, interior design is such a like big uh, encompassing uh, category, but what I do, which is the, the name is in, you know, this word is also in my company name is decor. And what really does that mean? It, again, it means finishes, such as paint and flooring and tile. Um, furniture, which obviously is self-explanatory, but it also includes fabrics and, and window treatments and art and stuff like that. Fixtures, which is cabinetry, lighting and plumbing and fixtures, etc. And equipment, which yes, appliances are obviously part of that, but also audio, video. And now these days it includes smart home technology. Mm. So um, just to give you a quick um, run through of some of my before and after pictures of some projects that I've worked on. Um, this was a pretty dismal kitchen. <laughs> um, it was definitely stuck in the late 80s, early 90s, and this young family um, really wanted something that was uh, much more conducive to entertaining and hanging out, and not so dark and dreary. You can't really tell the, the floor there, but it's this horrible tile floor that was unforgiving. You drop one thing and it goes into a million pieces. So they had a fairly tight budget. So what we did, the biggest changes that we did were uh, putting in a new floor uh, and putting in some new countertops and then splurging for some stainless steel appliances. And the rest of it, believe it or not, is pretty much just paint. Um, but it's much more airy and bright and inviting and definitely conducive to entertaining. So, um, yeah, that was, I, I thought that particular after was amazing. It's so bright and it's so, it's as if, you know, you've extended a window when really all you did was, was create a different feeling by painting and, and lightening up the floor and all of that. So great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you, appreciate that. Um, this was a tiny, well, it doesn't look tiny maybe in this picture, but it's fairly tiny living room that was just packed to the gills with furniture. And it was really hard to move around. Um, and so this family really wanted something, again, that was more conducive to entertaining and um, having conversation pieces. Uh, so big bulky furniture, uh, and you can't see this, but on to the left side of this room is a big bay window and they had a, a couch shoved up against it, which really is, um, is, is not ideal. So we created a more of an, uh, a, a, a room where, um, yes, you can spend every day watching TV and doing whatever it is that you do on a daily basis, but also that it really was, uh, again, conducive to, um, entertaining and having people over and, and having a uh, space where you can really have a conversation. Um, this is a bathroom that also was stuck in the 80s. And I mean, you can see that laminate countertop. It's like back in the day, I think it only came in beige, green, and ugly. <laughs> um, uh, so um, we definitely wanted to update this and make it more, um, you know, into the 21st century. So we just put in a nice vanity. Again, this was a fairly low budget project, um, but it just makes a huge difference when you make um, certain changes and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, gutting something down to the studs and start over. It could be in this case, changing over into a more contemporary vanity. Uh, we did put in a, a new shower stall and uh, a toilet and new floors. But, um, but a, a lot of, not a lot, but a few of the things that were in the old bathroom actually made it into the new bathroom, like the butt light fixture. There was nothing wrong with that. So this is actually my old house in Connecticut. And I just wanted to show you this because this is a pretty interesting story. So it was in desperate need of a new roof and it just desperate need of a painting job. So I decided to go bold and chose, chose some th very different colors. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's very New England looking though, you know. They, the yes, mm -hmm. yes. But the, the charcoal gray is um, something that is really good for clapboard type houses that have mm -hmm. more of that cape kind of look because this is obviously a cape. 
Um, but the interesting thing is um, when we were actually selling this house, I got phone calls and emails inquiring of which colors that I chose <laughs> because people liked it so much. So that was, that was kind of neat. So, but now I wanted to get to what, what are we here to talk about today? And that is basically what does home mean to you today? And that, that is really, I think, something that has been now become a front burner issue for a lot of us um, with lockdown. Not only are we working from home, but um, the kiddos are not in school and often um, and most of them have moved over to online uh, classes and stuff like that. So how, how our home, what our homes look like and how we function in our homes uh, have, have become really uh, the, the, the focus because before even if we weren't really happy with it, it's like, eh, you know, you went to the office or, and you did your work and the kids came home and, and you're just like, yeah, I know you're probably going to get to that someday, but, but um, you know, not now, but now, it's become um, a, a bigger issue. Now, two, about two years ago, a year and a half ago, IKEA did um, a survey, they called it at Life, Life at Home Report. And in there already then, pre-pandemic, they, they found that almost 40% of Americans don't feel at home in their homes. So that's saying a lot. And that a lot of people use a network of places outside to find privacy in alone time. So like whether it's your favorite coffee spot, maybe the library or some other, uh, you know, maybe public space like outside or something, which is also really interesting. So what they found was that people really would like to feel safe and grounded in their homes, which I think is even more prevalent now than ever. They, they would like to be, con you know, uh, content in their surroundings and feeling in control of their living space. So basically in short, they, they would like to make their homes a sanctuary. And um, that's again now more more prevalent than ever. So, one of our biggest challenges right now is many of us feel really powerless, like we have no control over anything. And so, it is hugely important for us, for our psychological and emotional well-being, to take charge over things that we can control. And a lot of what in, in our homes we can. Um, you know what what really struck me, Ganella, about that that IKEA report was that, like you said, even before this happened, that's how people were feeling. And then we force people to be trapped inside their homes where they don't feel all of those things. So I think this is really timely and, and I think you've really tapped into a need that, um, yeah, we didn't have any control over having to shelter in place, but what can we do now that we're here? Yeah, and, and, and I think to today's webinar is more, um, I, I really wanted to co concentrate on things that we can do, even though we are in, you know, in, in lockdown and things that doesn't require um, a lot of money, um, in some cases, none at all, um, because we have a lot of time at home. Yes, we work at home, but then we all, you know, we're stuck at home. <laughs> and so you can go a little nutty. So I'm what I want to concentrate on now is tips on how you can turn your house into a sanctuary right now. Um, in, even though we're in the midst of this mess. So the most impactful thing you can do that won't cost you a dime that only requires a little elbow grease will yield immediate result and gratifying results. And I highly encourage everyone to get the whole family involved, get the kiddos involved get everyone involved. And this is something that actually will make you feel empowered. So what is that? Declutter. Cluttered house is, is means that you, a cluttered mind, right? Um, we, when things are out of order and, and just piles and palm piles, your mind actually <laughs> doesn't function properly. So my question is, does your garage look like this? <laughs> Um, now is a perfect time to maybe finally attack that garage and, and, um, or tackle that garage. I should say, maybe not attack it. Um, so I would say that whatever rooms or spaces where you store stuff, and it may not be your garage, it may be a closet, spare room, maybe a shed, 
And if you're fortunate enough to have an attic, not many houses out here do, but if you do, um, I would say start cleaning it out and sort it into four different piles, right? A sell pile, a donate pile, a toss pile, and a keep pile. And sell, the sell pile um, should consist of things that are either you've never used or slightly used and, and still is in very good condition, um, near, or at least near new. Donate pile should be slightly used again, but you know not really um, in good enough condition to maybe sell, um, but definitely something that somebody else could enjoy and have use of. Toss pile obviously are things that you never use and are not in any condition to sell or donate. And then the keep pile. And it's really good to sort them into these different piles because it's just easier to deal with. Again, just doing this will help you get your mind kind of uncluttered. So whatever you're keeping, definitely organize. And I'm a big believer of a place for everything and everything in its place. So remember that cluttered garage? Wouldn't you just much rather have a garage that looks like this? I mean, I look yes. at this and my mind relaxes already. <laughs> yes. um, but it is a very, you know, psychological. Again, once you've done this, you feel like, yeah, you've accomplished something and you have, you know, you have organized and, and you now have control over something. And that really helps our mental um, and emotional state as well. The other thing that we also now are faced with, most of us, is your home is your office. So if you have the luxury of having a spare room or already had a room that was dedicated to an office, awesome. But not a lot of, you know, there are a lot of people that don't have the luxury. So they have to create a corner of a room, could be a living room, could be the dining room, could maybe be your kitchen table. Um, but if you are doing a workspace in a corner of a room, I rec highly recommend that you set very clear boundaries between your workspace and your home life so that when your work is done for the day, that you put your stuff out of sight. So if it's a laptop or it's files or books or whatever, whatever it is that you need to do your work, to put it away so that you can't even see it and then have your home life for the evening um, and then when it's time to get start working again in the morning, fine, you can put all of that stuff up. So um, that could be maybe, maybe it's like a, a corner, an alcove, um, literally a corner of a room. Now here's, not a lot of us has an extra closet, but if you do, this is another great way to be able to build a, 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 an office inside and then when you're done, you can actually shut the door on the closet. So mm -hmm. if you have an extra closet, uh, that's awesome. Another thing that you know you can do is create what I refer to as a serenity lounge. And again, if you have a spare room where you can create this, great. But even if you do it in a corner of a room, that also would be really nice. Somewhere where you can maybe have a really small sofa or love seat, um, comfy armchair, could be a chaise, could be a daybed, and then you know, pile on the pillows and, and the blankets, pillows and then more blankets. And also where you can have really nice adjustable lighting for, you know, reading or watching or doing sewing or whatever, or knitting maybe. So to me, uh, the Serenity Lounge is supposed to be a place where you can escape, where you can have some privacy time, read, listen to music, nap, relax and recharge. And these days more and more people do more and more meditation and praying and such, um, which is, needed for so much of us so it could be something as you know wonderful as this where you can you can sit up you can lay down um plenty of lighting for reading and that sort of thing or maybe it's a chaise could be maybe in your master bedroom if it's large enough to have something like this or any other room for that matter or who doesn't want to curl up in a you know comfy armchair like this in, in a nice corner with a cup of tea and maybe a nice book or something so those are some suggestions. Now the bedroom is, <laughs> should be a sacred space. Now a good night's sleep is paramount. And why, well, you know, it is an investment in yourself, uh, a, a very important one at that. Um, and the reason why is we function better and we think more clearly when we have had a good night's sleep. And it is important, frankly, for our physical and psychological health too, because research has shown that 
sleep deprivation can lead to a weakened immune system. And right now we need all the help to boost our immune system that we can. Right. Um, so when it comes to your bedroom, granted investing in a high quality bed may not be practical right this minute, mm -hmm. but it's something I would highly recommend moving forward, you know, once we're through this. Um, because I'm a big believer in when you buy a bed, you really should be going and testing it out and laying in it and to make sure that it is the right fit for you. And, but what you could do right now is you could invest in quality comforters or blankets and pillows. I mean, this is something you can order online. There are lots of outlets for that. Um, and I would highly recommend investing in Egyptian cotton sheets. Egyptian cotton is extra soft. And I would also, again, recommend 400 thread count or higher. The higher the thread count, the softer the sheets, which is always nice. And then invest in good adjustable lighting for bedtime reading. It's also important because when you get into that bed, you, you definitely want to feel like a million bucks. And maybe this is your cup of tea with maybe darker wood that you know makes it feel cozy and warm. Or maybe this is more your style with lots of pillows and fluffy comforter and um, you know nice big um, headboard or something more traditional along these uh, along along these lines so bathroom is another place where you can do some stuff right now to make you feel really um, pampered and special so something again that you can order online right now invest in some sort of Egyptian cotton towels um, white is always nice. It just makes it feel so clean and fresh. Another thing you can do is invest in luxurious body and hair care products that also make you feel very special and pampered. Uh, again, you know, being kind to ourselves right now as we're in the midst of this is just also hugely important. So um, also create a relaxing atmosphere. If you, if you have um, a bathtub, um, Great way to do this, obviously, is take a bubble bath. Maybe you light some candles. Maybe you have um, some relaxing, soft music on and your favorite beverage. Maybe it's your favorite tea or a glass of wine or whatever that you like. So it could be something as easy as this, where if you, as you see that wooden board that is across the bathtub, that is a good place where you maybe can put a book, you know, if you have a book stand to read or your tablet even and um, just have some place to to do you know just a relaxing what you drink whatever or maybe this is your thing like lit candles and really get into it and just get co cozy and comfy um so yeah so let's not forget the kids um they need a safe and happy space too so one suggestion is build a tp tent with your kids and you can use bed sheets and blankets and pillows to make a, you know, a space for them where they, they can feel safe and shut out the world for a while and, and maybe share their feelings with you to, to talk about how, what's going through their minds and their fears and concerns and whatnot. And, and um, maybe you read to them depending on what age there are, they are, or maybe you have them read to you just, just, just to have bonding time with your kids, kids in a space where they feel um, like they can shut out the word for, world for a bit. So it could be something that looks like this, or this is a, a super cool tent. Um, this is actually the tent that is in the movie, The Holiday, um, where Jude Law and his two, you know, character of Jude Law and his two daughters, they built this and spent time in there. So have you, if you haven't seen the movie, you should take a look at it. It. it's a super cool space um okay so other things that you can do to make your home a sanctuary a little or no cost um bring in nature uh, maybe you grow some herbs maybe you grow some vegetables of some kind um plants could be flowery plants could be leafy plants but bringing in nature is uh you know also a really good way to ground us um, bring in natural light uh, also. I mean, we're, we're not kind of that far off to plants. Like we need, we need light, we need water and keeping yourself hydrated right now, they keep talking about, right? So, so bring in natural light, open those curtains and shades and let that daylight in. Um, another way to do it is light and airy window treatments. Um, you know, sheer white ones are good. 
Um, this may seem obvious, but believe it or not, this is a really good one to do. Clean your windows. Um, that will also let in a lot of um, natural light. If you have if you have shrubs or trees that partially or or fully are blocking some of that daylight, trim them so that you get more of it in. Then another way you also can do it, even if it's you know a, a challenging room where it's the first four things are not necessarily making all that big of a difference. You can add mirrors and reflective objects. Word of warning here though, don't do too much because um, if there's too much reflective light, you will end up being sun blind and that's not a good thing. <laughs> so use these sorts of things sparingly just to bring, help bring in a little bit of light. Um, so it could be, you know, any of these things like you see sheer white curtains or sheer white, um, you know, shades um, that allows for a lot of light to come in. Um, it's really good for our, um, me again, mental and emotional state. It will help us, um, you know, get out of our funk a little bit. Other things that you can do um, to soothing colors that you love. So if you are in, in the process of thinking about maybe getting that bedding and those, those towels, choose colors that you really love. Um, that's a good way to go. Maybe you're really missing your loved ones that you can't spend time with right now, whether it's extended family or your best friend or whatever. Frame pictures of them or favorite places that you visited. And it doesn't have to be something, you know, vacation. It could be like literally somewhere you, let, you go on, on a regular basis. So that also will help you feel um, more connected. And then music. music. Music is such a big, important thing to um it may you may need to be something that chillaxes you or something where that you need to get energized because you are ready to tackle that garage or that closet so you need to get pumped up for it but music is a really good one to also incorporate into your daily routine so that's about it and this is how you can get in touch with me um I mean, my, my business has, has been um, really focused on short-term rentals up until this point, for sure. Um, so that's obviously the biggest slice of that pie is vacation rental, executive housing, and temporary housing. But all of this that I've been talking about uh, applies to, no matter what, that applies to, to these temporary um, housing, um, as well as our, our permanent forever homes right now. We just need to really feel grounded. And like I said, there are, these are some simple tips on how you can get, um, get there at least till things are getting back to whatever the new normal is, where you can maybe do some, some, uh, some more improvements that, that uh, would require going to a store and uh, being out in public. That's great. That's awesome. So um, a couple of questions for you, um, Ganella, that's come yep. in from, from folks. Um, could you say a little bit more about color, about um, the type of color that you choose? And um, it, should it just be a color that makes you feel good or should there be sort of a method to your madness in the color that you choose? Yeah, I mean, look, we, we, all, um, we all have reactions to colors and it's been proven, right? Um, so uh, there is the color wheel, there's the primary colors, secondary colors, et cetera. But let me just kind of simplify it a little bit. Cooler colors ha have a calming effect. So cooler colors, the coolest color in the color wheel is blue. Um, so shades of blue could be light blue, could be you know, any of the blues and then warmer colors or the warmest color in the color wheel is also orange. Um, so if you need to feel energized or you need to be productive um, for like an office, for example, like yellow is really good because that will help you be productive. But yes, I mean, we also have our favorite colors. I mean, one of my favorite colors is red, but I also really like blue. I like wearing red, but I like blue. Uh, I tend to be drawn to blue when it comes to interior design because it does have that calming effect. And my, my passion is to create serene spaces where people can relax and where they can, um, you know, recharge. And that, like I said, that goes for no matter what type of housing you're in. 
Um, but some people, you know, it's like, oh God, I, red is like, I hate that. I just love greens. So it's, it's what speaks to you. If you feel, um, you know, let's say a purple is what you, you just love purple. There is nothing wrong with going with purple. Uh, if it makes you feel good, if it puts a smile on your face, if it calms you, whatever it does to you. Um, so definitely incorporate both, I would say. Great. Um, so here's another question is going back to, uh, the idea of decluttering. I think, um, people are, are feeling an urge to do that right now because here you are stuck in your house and you see all of the clutter around yes. you. So yeah. I know I'm hearing from my friends, you know, and so forth that they've gone out and cleaned their garage or, or something. But, um, can you speak a little bit more about about that about the power of decluttering not just like something like a garage but but inside your home like things out on the counter and that kind of stuff yeah yeah again um believe it or not it's not just tidying up and and making uh something decluttered from from a physical aspect but it has such a which I think I mentioned has a huge impact on your mental and emotional well-being too. Mm -hmm. um, so absolutely, it could be a closet. It could be that that just time has gone by and you have piles of paper, different piles of paper, or magazines, or books, or you know the kids um, constantly leave their their toys out. Um, it it just your are the way the, the way our brains are wired it really makes us feel much more in control uh when when we feel that everything has its place uh and we we are able to find things easily mm -hmm. yes. because otherwise it feels like it the stuff is on top of you instead of you being on top of your stuff if that makes sense yes um and yeah. so it, it's it's a Again, it's a sense of taking back some control. Uh, and especially right now where we feel like, you know, we're being told and we have no control over our lives. You can only go to the grocery store and you must wear a mask and you must wear gloves and you can't go and you you got to stay home and you got to work at home. And so we feel so confined and we feel like powerless. And so this is a really good way to feel like you, you're gaining some, some control back. But yeah, absolutely, like sorting things, even cleaning out your drawers um, and, and taking a look. And, and believe you me, you're going to find stuff in there. You look, oh, this is where this thing went to die. Um, <laughs> and, um, and you're like, wow, I have literally not used this in like eight years. Guess what? It's time to, again either sell it, donate it, or get rid of it. Yeah. I mean, the, the rule is basically if you haven't used something in a year or two, um, unless it's seasonal stuff, like maybe, maybe you have Christmas decorations or whatnot. But if it's something that is, is other than seasonal, what, when was the last time they used it? And be really hard. Like, are you really ever going to use that thing ever again? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Um, I, it's really easy for me to get rid of things that husband hasn't used in a while. <laughs> yeah. It's harder for me to get rid of stuff I haven't used in a while. So that's it. And you know what, to, to that point too, um, let letting go is, is a, such a freeing thing because it's also an emotional letting go. And sometimes we hold on to stuff and we, you know, sometimes hold on to grudges and, and, just hold on to events that happen and we just can't let it go. And it's actually one of the helpful things to do too when we do get rid of stuff that we haven't used in a long time. It's actually an emotional freedom that happens too. It's not just letting go of that thing, but you, you somehow also help, help letting, letting go of some of emotional baggage as well. You know, um, we've talked about... Um, clutter and the impact of clutter and and so forth and um and i i know that that a lot of us are huge hdtv fans and i know that makes your skin crawl <laughs> probably <laughs> but but one of the things that always strikes me when they're doing these um redesigns or something is how much they just it wasn't necessarily 
ripping out and putting in new. Sometimes it was just making better use of what was already there, you know, better space usage or putting stuff away or, or what have you. So could you say a little bit about um, having a better use of space? You know, um, one, of your, one of your before and afters showed big furniture as versus making use of the space. But right now when we don't have the option of going out and buying new furniture or something, what, what else can people do as far as rearranging or, or what have you? Well, if you have, if, if, if you right now are like, oh, this room is so cramped. There's so much stuff in here. Um, if there's any way that you could um, remove some items and maybe temporarily put them, okay, here we go, the garage. <laughs> I know, I said, clean out your garage, right? But you don't live in your garage like you live in your, your apartment or your house. So if even if you could... Um, just remove a couple of items to feel like you can breathe. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something that in staging is 90% of the time. It's not a question of adding things into a home. It's more like taking things out. So make it feel airy and open and, and inviting and welcome. Um, so, so that's something that you could do right now. Um, uh, yeah. It, it, that's, it, that is simple enough. And, and you know what? It's amazing what a coat of paint will do. So if it's, it feels like kind of dark and dreary, um, maybe it's time to go from that, I don't know, dark green walls and just get some, some lighter color, like neutral light colors that, that brighten up the room. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that should, you, you could go to Home Depot and Lowe's. I don't believe they are closed. Um, so you could go and get a can of paint and start painting them. That's a fun project to get the whole family involved in. Yeah. I love painting. It just never seems to end though. You know, it's, uh, you paint something and you go, oh, the floor doesn't look good anymore. And then, oh, we'll replace the floor. Oh no, now this doesn't look good. You know, so I know. <laughs> it can be never ending. I know. It's like art. It's never finished. It's just abandoned, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, Ganilla, this has been fascinating. I, I just, I could talk about home remodeling and home decorating and stuff probably all day long. And then if we go out into the yard and we start talking about the garden, then I'll be there the rest of the day, you know, yeah. <laughs> this is some of my, my favorite topics, but I hope that this has given our participants some great ideas about easy, cost-effective things that they can do, you know, right now to really take take charge, feel like you're taking a little bit more charge of, of things and um, having a little bit more control over things in our lives, you know, in a, especially in a time where we feel like we don't have a lot of control and um, the little things just make you feel so good. We, we just painted an access, accent wall in our house this past weekend and I just love the way it made me feel and it was it was so easy for us and it was a project we worked on so i uh I, there's a, a lot we can do right instead of focusing on what we can't do you know focus on what we can do and um and and just take it from there yeah i mean there's just so much negative um stuff going on right now that that to take a step in a positive direction where you feel more in control i think will be really helpful Yes, I totally agree. Totally agree. Well, Ganilla, again, thank you so much for being my, my very, very special thought leader on this webinar today. Thank and to all of the attendees who were with us, uh, as well as those that will be listening to this in the replay, I just thank you for joining us. Thank you for checking out the content that we're providing. And I look forward to you joining us again soon with our next Women Lead webinar series on how you can lead, achieve, and succeed as a female leader in business. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ganilla, again. And I look forward to seeing everybody the next time we're all together out here online. Take well, thank care you now. so much for having me. It's been a, it's been a great joy. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.